Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. What we have here is a Silco Super Special and we did the video a couple of weeks ago about changing the gear in here and we do have one on our lock shop if you have the same problem. So with this key machine here, it had a few problems when it came to me. Uh, the plastic gear down there was broken, the cutter was missing a few teeth, the light didn't work and the belts needed replacing. So we've got new parts for it now. We've replaced the gear already and as you can see, we got good travel on that, nice and solid, it's never going to break again. It was just too good a machine to throw throw away and honestly a machine like this if it's looked after it can last quite a while. And for the small problems it has it's more of a maintenance thing I see it as and once you replace all these things it's going to cut a perfect key again. So let's get into it, I've got um, some new belts. So these are the belts here, as you can see them here I've got a new belt, um, I've got a new light for it too, I don't know how this is going to go on but here we go here it's going to replace this horrible thing look it just needs to be a 240 volt light it needs to give good light to where you're cutting the key i opted for this one here because it has this switch on the front so if we do it right this uh, should be somewhere down here coming around here and you know doing better than this this one here is a miniature fluoro light so it had two fluoros going left and right it's old it's crappy it's nasty if i can i'll try and reuse the same hole I'm going to try and ditch this base here because it's got a screw, put that straight through there with a flexible conduit and it should look nice. For the cutting wheel as well, we've um, opted for a brand new cutting wheel, that's one of the more expensive replacement things but without that you're not going to be cutting a good key. This one here is one of the ones that has the two sides so it'll allow you to go backwards and forwards a little bit. More or less you want to be going in this direction but when you're in the valleys you want to be going left and right. And for the belts here, originally they had these um, type of uh, v-shaped belts but what we've opted for is a bit of a bit of a changeover and we're going for these type of belts here mainly because these ones um, they're almost impossible to find and i'm not really happy paying 100 and something bucks a belt when you need two of them when we can use something like this put it straight on oh look at that perfect fit perfect fit no motor adjustment needed i can just wind that one on and as you see they're fitting straight into the groove and even if um even if they do break they shouldn't because they've got you know made a very similar material even if they do break they're cheap to replace so it's not going to make any difference Okay, so I powered it up, I checked it, and I find the belts are a little bit sloppy for my liking. So I'm just going to tighten the motor up now. I'm going to loosen the motor off, push the motor back because it's elongated holes. That'll put more pressure on the belts and we'll be good. That's better. All right, let's plug it in and see how, it, uh, how the belts move now. have power okay they're not vibrating as much that seems good next bit So now that's the cover back on, the plastic cover. This cover's been used on a few different machines, so it's good to get that back on. And now we have the machine, uh, sorry, the motor and the belts and all that sort of stuff all sorted. Let's move to the next phase, which will be, let's put the cutter on. Okay, so I've made sure I've got the right cutter here. And I've got my special tool, which is uh, this one here. This is used to lock the spindle. So you rotate the spindle until there's a hole that goes all the way through. I'm just bring that off. And we have our brand new cutter, look at this, brand spanking new, super sharp, okay, and that will be going in this direction, make sure it's going the right direction, putting that on and it fits absolutely perfectly. Now we changed this because the other one was missing a couple of teeth. If it's missing a couple of teeth, these uh, cutters are quite fragile and you don't want it to shatter, so, and this is reverse thread, so I should be turning it opposite direction. There we go, it's started. Now we have our housing as well, which goes over the top. Just got to remember, oh, there goes one of those things, that's all right. So, 
Why have they got the screws on that side? Aha, goes like that. Okay, and we'll, we'll tighten them up in a minute. Okay, so reverse thread, the, when the motor's spinning, it should actually tighten on itself. Okay, cutter is installed. Okay, so we've got power to the machine, we're all good, it's not zapping us. We're going to back this drawer off, flip it round, and put the key in this side. I'm basically just going to take out a whole heap of meat off it and just see how the belt sound and see how it's cutting. Eff effortlessly we just cut the whole key kind of in half, you didn't even hear it, so that's perfect. I did hear a little bit of noise coming from um, the other thing, coming from uh, the buffing wheel there, which unfortunately I can't really do much about. It's either you have the buffing wheel or you don't, and hopefully with a few buffs it'll stop sort of hitting it, its uh, casing there. I'm noticing there is also a little hole here as well, which is an Allen key, uh, so we might just loosen that one off and put a little bit of lubricant in there. It probably hasn't had lubricant in many years. So let's do that, and then we're going to get onto the light. So new belts, new cutter, reassembled. This flicks around uh, the front here to give you some protection against the swarf. I'm going to flick that out of the way. Power is off. Now we move to the, the big kahuna. So we're going to be hooking this up. This is a 240 volt light and it's got a, a little um, screw thread on there. So time to rip this one out and see what we can do with it, I think. Alright, power is definitely off. That's good. Okay, and there we have it. So, looking at this here, we need to work out this wiring. This seems to be this for the fluorescence. Looks like it might be. So, this comes up through here. Three wires, three wires, and then it comes down. So, this whole power pack is not needed. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. We've replaced the gear to allow the carriage to go left and right. So that's working nicely now that you get the complete travel. No worries there. So we can do everything we need to. We've replaced the cutter. We've replaced the belt. We didn't really need to replace a buffing wheel. It still had some on there. Uh, we've replaced the light as well. So instead of doing this horrible, terrible thing and uh, putting new fluoro bulbs in it, we're taking out the fluoro uh, the fluoro uh, transformer wired in this light directly and uh, lubricated everything now it's pretty much just up for a clean but now's the stage where we tested it and see what's going on so basically everything that could have been done has been done apart from just a calibration and a clean so let's see how we go now so let's turn it on we have power that's good let's try a light we have light that's a lot more light than we would have got off one of these things it's a lot more directed and it's on a nice flexible shaft too so if you want it there or if you're hard of seeing and you want to bring it up the top wherever you want to bring it you can do it 
and put in the light exactly where you want. So this uh, flexible shaft is a lot better than this old flexible shaft here. See this? Forwards, backwards, you can't really move that anywhere. And the technology is too old. The brightness on this, really bright. So, Okay, so let's change the jaws and let's cut a key. First key cut on this since it's uh, reincarnation or revival, whatever you want to call. Okay, so where's my thing here? I put my cutter up there. Bring this along to here. Okay, and when I flick this, we'll flick it out of the way. Oop, move this out of the way. This gets up. I'm trying to pull it like uh, the, the old Ilco machine, you push it. Alright, let's cut this key. Cuts very nice, cuts very silently. It's a little bit out of calibration, I can definitely tell there. It's a little bit deep on this. But as far as making the noise of key machine, like, that does not make any noise. That cutter is super sharp. That sounds beautiful. And when, look at that, just completely annihilates the key. So it cuts well, needs readjusting. But all in all, this machine now is ready to go back in service. I'm going to give it a big clean up and then I'll probably end up just putting it on our website for anyone who wants to buy it or uh, giving it away to another locky um, that I've got in mind. It's a good little machine, even this button here. That's for when you're doing your buffing. You know, it's perfect. Perfect to go back into service. I don't like this Perspex because there's a bit of reflection on it, but I guess also you can just direction the light down like that. That's a perfect, perfect light. I can see it. Turn it on, turn it off, easy. And even, even if you want, you can, um, you know, turn your machine off, leave your light on, completely up to you. All right, so that's the Suka, Spe Suka Super Special, uh, reincarnated and back in, in the thing. I might even do just a little quick video and show you what it looks like once I've polished it all up. Because once it's all polished up, it's going to be definitely looking a little bit better than it is. But at least it's back in service now. And it's the sort of machine that will probably last another 20 years quite easily without any, you know, without too many adjustments. Leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching.